So I'm building this desk right now, you know, for ministry needs, you know what I'm saying? And I messed up about like four times already, putting the wrong thing on the wrong, you know, the parts, um, just the parts being upside down, you know, and I thought I had it. I was following the directions, you know, what it said to do, I thought I did it, you know, and it looked like it was right in my eyes. But sometimes stuff that looks right in our eyes isn't really right. You know, so you got to, like, take your time. And also, I'm making everything spiritual. That's what you do. You just make everything spiritual. We're spiritual people. This life is just, it's, re it's reflecting the spiritual realm, but you're looking through it through a dirty mirror. That's why Christ and um, it's, you know, coming together marriage, it, it signifies coming together with Jesus. That's the most... You know, down here, you come together with your wife you love so much. Holy matrimony, till death do you part. You know, it's the most holy thing. It's the beautiful thing. Jesus, us coming together with him, being one flesh, one flesh. You're just looking through it through a dirty lens. So we can make everything spiritual, you know, for our benefit and godliness. But um, also, I was rushing. I was trying to force it. There were certain things I was trying to force. And then when it would come to a part where, you know, I would have to connect this to that. I don't know if you can see it. Connect this to this. I had this up, so I had this mixed up. So I had this down here and this up there. And then I thought I had it right. And then when it comes to the part where I had to put this on this, I realized, I was like, oh no, there's something wrong. There is something wrong. And I realized, listen, if you're building stuff, look, every hole has a purpose. I'm looking at it, I was like, maybe they just, maybe that hole is not like, you don't gotta use that hole. It's for there. It's just, no. They, they, they built this very good, and every hole is for a purpose. So, every hole is for a purpose. So, it's like, and then, so when it came to the time, I was like, oh, no, this is messed up. And then I, like, sat down, and I thought about it. I was like, okay, this is messed up. I have to put this. So, like, these two were switched. So, I, was, I had to redo it all. I had to take these off. And these were wrong, too. I was forcing it. I was like, why is this, why is this like this? And then it was kind of wobbly. I was like, I guess, I don't, I don't know. Maybe they did it wrong. It's us that does it wrong. And that's, that, that's how it is with God, too, in our walk. We try to force so much things. We don't have to force things. I'm telling you, after I, fit, I, after I put it back together the right way, it was just smooth sailing after that. Like, it was just, it was just flowing. Like, I didn't have to force nothing. I, I screwed them in back fast. Perfect. And I'm going to show you, um, there's another part. You know where I messed up too. Like I'm gonna show you this right here. I'm gonna play that clip right now. So see if you look, this top is gonna go on top of this right here. You know what I mean? So like you got the holes right here. That's gonna connect to if you can tell this hole right here. See that hole right there, and then another one right there. That one right there, but. That's obviously not gonna work because I was rushing and I put this upside down. See, there's no holes. So let me see if I can show you. See, here go the hole. <laughs> so I gotta redo this part. See, there goes the hole right there. I gotta redo the part. I gotta take that apart and flip it and then it will work. This happened like about four times already sometimes we try to force things we don't have to force things you know it's just much better just to let god do his thing if you're walking the way you're supposed to walk on this road on this narrow road with the prince of peace the only begotten one jesus christ of nazareth the way you're walking bro you're gonna end up in god's will because you're following the spirit like the gifts you have use those your gifts is what comes natural super easy to you like Making videos, preaching, teaching, it comes super easy to me because of Jesus, Holy Spirit, you know what I mean? And there's other things I desire to do, right, for ministry, but those don't come super easy. So it's kind of like I'm forcing myself to do this. God didn't tell me to do that, you know what I'm saying? That's why I say some things that are good, I want to do it for the ministry, but that doesn't mean it's right. So all things that are good doesn't mean it's right, you know? When you're in your calling, you're like a duck in water. But when you're outside of your calling, you're like a duck on land. They wobble and they look foolish. 
I love ducks though. But it's like that's how we look. When we're doing something we're not called to do, when we're doing something that doesn't, you feel me, we look foolish. You know, but whatever comes natural, that's where God's blessing, that's where his hand is. You know, God's gonna finish what he started, you know. But if he didn't start that, he has no obligation to finish it. Like, he didn't tell you to go do that. I mean, like, what, what? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, um, yeah, I just wanted to turn this into a spiritual moment, and spiritual teaching, you know, a spiritual lesson. You know, you don't have to force things. You know what I mean? You just have to sit there. God said, All you, I, I will fight for you. You just have to be still. It seemed right. It seemed good. But I was missing steps. I didn't. I rushed. Like, I looked. I mean, I, I go fast with things, like, so that's why that happened. But I, I looked at the thing, right? I seen it said this, that, together. Okay, boom. I got it. Simple. It was going good. It was going good until another part came, and I was like, oh, man, I can't do this part because I didn't do that part right. In times where I walk with Jesus, there are certain things we're going to come to, and we're not going to be able to do those right because we didn't do the first step to that right and one example i could give you is like marriage in this christian walk everybody want to get married it's okay we all have that desire god put us in the, god put that desire inside of us you know what i'm saying but when we come to that we might not handle that right because we didn't handle this season right this season of singleness we didn't handle it right you know in this single season of singleness you should work on yourself Whoever you are as a single is what you bring to a relationship. You know what I'm saying? So many people, they look for this and that. They're looking for different people, this and that. They're looking for, they don't even know themselves. They don't even like love themselves. Like how you want somebody else to enjoy your um, company, but you don't even enjoy your company. You know what I'm saying? Like there's certain things in life we gotta, we gotta do good at this step so we can do, so we can flourish in this next step. So that's how I was. I couldn't do the next step because I didn't do that step right. And it's also, I was speeding. You know, I was like, just going through, I didn't really take my time. You know, it seemed very simple. I didn't take my time with it. And I put it together and then it was wrong. Why are we trying to force this? We, 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 we try to go so fast on this walk. Oh, I'm missing something. Oh, if I don't get married at this time, I'm missing something. Oh, if I don't get this job or if I don't do this for the ministry, I'm missing something. Like, no, bro. Like, all things work together for good to those who are called according to his purpose. In this walk, we try to speed. Like, we don't have to speed through this walk. I was thinking about it like this. Like, God is eternal. God don't got no rush to do nothing. He has no rush to do nothing. We are the ones that are in rush because we have like this. We think we have this time limit from the day we are born to the day we die. We got like this time limit. Like we got to do this. Oh, I'm in my 20s. If I'm not doing everything right, if I don't have a house by I'm 20, I feel like I'm losing this and that. Look, man, God is not in no rush. He's living forever. We, he has eternity. We got to be on his timing. It's not our timing. It's his timing. His timing is always perfect. You know, there was no better time for you to come to Jesus than the time you did come. You know, because there's certain times you weren't ready. Certain times you had to learn stuff for you to be stronger in your walk with Jesus. There's no need to speed. You either pace it with God or you speed with the devil. The devil gives you everything quickly, you know what I mean? Fast food. You can hit up this sneaky link. You can hit up this plug, get drugs, alcohol. You could, you know, go to the club have a one night stand, get sex instantly. You could go on Pornhub, watch this. You could go on Tinder and find something to do. Everything's fast with the devil. But guess what? It kills you and it destroys you. Kills you and destroys you, leaves you empty. You know what I mean? People, they, they go into witchcraft because they seem like the devil gives them power quickly. The devil don't care if you destroy yourself. God, he'll give you power, but there's things you gotta learn so you can steward that power well. So you can steward that power well. So you don't, because you can't have so much power, but your character is really low. You know, you start to get prideful. You know, if you if you had power, you don't got no character. You got gifts, but you have no fruits. You know, you have the gifts of the spirit, but no fruits of the spirit. You know, God has a certain way. He does everything. He cares about you. So he's not going to give you something that destroys you. So that's why we speed in to get this and that. You know what I mean? But you're not even developed yet. You're not developed to do that. You're not developed to do those things right now. So be faithful where you are currently in your walk. That's all. That's all I'm trying to do. 
is be faithful where I'm at right now in my walk. Everything's going to come to me. You know, everything that is for me will come to me in time if I am faithful with what I'm doing right now. You're always thinking about the future. Like, when am I going to be a preacher? When am I going to be preaching to the multitude? When am I going to be pastoring these people? When am I going to have kids? You always think about the future. You're not worried about the present. You have to build yourself right now because this is the time you're not going to have no more. When you have kids, you're not going to have this time to just chill with the friends or uh, study up on the word, you know, and especially if you pastor in a church, you're not going to have that time no more. Right now, you have so much time on your hands, so much time to save money, so much time to do so much things, bro. You know, get your life right before you try to help other people because you won't try to help them, but your life is not right yourself. So always apply what you learn. You know, apply the word. You hear something good in this video, praise God, and apply that word to your life. It's not enough to watch the video and be like, man, he snapped. That's good. Apply it to your life. That's when life changed. And as I was doing this, this is my first time I ever did, like, I built this, built one of these by myself. You know, I was doing it, and I was learning as I was going. I was like, man, like I said earlier in the video, every hole matters. Like, I was, I was ready just to... Try to be quick with it, you know? Want it done, done, done. No. Good things take time. So I wanted it done so fast. I missed holes. I was like, man, I don't think that hole matters. I don't know why they put that there. Hell, <laughs> you know I man, did you ever make these and then you miss the hole where it's like this hole? What is this supposed to be? You're like, that don't, that don't even matter. They messed up. I didn't mess up. Nah, we messed up. Every hole matters for the purpose of making this the best so you can get the best value out of it, you know? So I learned that. So when I make this again, you know, maybe in the future I'm, I'm building something else, I learn now. I, I'm going to take what I learned from this lesson and apply it to that lesson. Every hole matters. You know, so now I'm not going to be like, this hole, what is this? No, I went through this already. I'm going to know that, you know, this, this hole right here is for one of these. But since I didn't put this here, since I didn't put this on there, y'all can see that? Since I didn't put that on there, I'm gonna be like, why is this hole here? Maybe they messed up. No, you have to put that on and then put that through that hole right there. So, when you go through a lesson on this walk, it's good to go through lessons. It's good to go through lessons so you can know how to handle the situation when you go through another lesson. You deal with a fake friend, you deal with a fake Christian that destroyed your heart. Now you know. If you see the same symptoms in somebody else, you're like, okay, you back up a little bit. You know, you don't hate them. You don't hate them. You love them, forgive them, but you know how to handle that situation. You went through a bad breakup. You know, it's the same thing when we was in the world. You went through life. You learned lessons. Fake friend. Friend backstab you. This girl cheated on you. This guy cheated on you. You learned that that builds you up. Everything you went through in life, it made you learn something, right? So, now it's the same thing when you're born again. You're born again, you're like a baby, fresh out the womb. You're going to learn lessons with Jesus now. You know, you're going to learn lessons with Holy Spirit by your side. And you got to, the lessons you learn, you apply them to your life so you can get a better um, walk on this road. You know, the Bible says, James 1, verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience. Let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect, entire, wanting nothing. James said, my brother, my sisters, count it joy when you go through diverse temptations. It's very hard to do that. But when that temptation comes, count it joy like, oh, this produces patience. This produces a fruit that I need, you know, knowing you got to know, though, you know, you count it joy. You can't count it joy if you don't know. You can't count it because it says, my brother, I count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience. You cannot you cannot count it as joy if you don't know that it's going to produce something that you need. You know what I mean? We're going to we're going to. We're more likely to enjoy something if we know we're going to get something out of it, right? If you think the temptation coming, you're not going to get nothing out of it. Just maybe you fall into sin or, you know, you're not going to like that. But if you temptation comes and you know this is producing something in you, steadfast, 
uh, you're, it's producing patience, it's producing character, and you know it's going to produce something, you're going to be more likely to, to count it as joy when diverse temptations come, knowing, knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience. Let patience have a perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire wanting nothing. So when you go through things, you know, count it joy, knowing that it's going to benefit you because you're going to grow. You know, what I mean? you know what I mean? Like, you have to go through things to grow through it. You know, people that, here's a brick wall and they're scared to go through it. It's very, it's hard. It's a, it's a storm. It's a, it's a t diverse temptation. It's, it's, a, it's a brick wall. People want to go around it, never, never handle it. But boom, when you go through it, you grow through it. And now you're a different person. You grew through that. You know, now you can help somebody else. Learn the lesson. See, I learned this lesson. I'm going to apply it when I have to build something again. You know what I mean? So learn the lessons you go through as you walk with Jesus Christ. That boy Jesus, man, he's cool, man. That boy, if you don't know Jesus, man, you lame. I'm not going to lie. Rah. But Jesus, he's different. Jesus. He's the best thing, man. He gets your life right down here. You have a good life, you know. Satisfied, fulfillment, purpose. But he also gets your life right for the afterlife. This life is not forever. I'm not going to live forever, you know. But we keep our eyes on the hope of glory. We keep our eyes on Jesus. You, me, we're all walking on water because we're looking at Jesus. But you notice when you go through things or your mind is filled with other things or you're falling into sin, you took your eyes off Jesus, you start drowning. You fell into sin. Now you're looking at yourself. You think condemnation, shame, guilt. I'm not worthy for Jesus. I can't do this. Jesus don't want me. I'm not going to go back to God. You already took your eyes off him. That's why you're drowning. But if you run back to him, so Lord, forgive me. His arm, he's ready for you. You know, you can get up and walk this road out better. You know, you worried about a boyfriend or girlfriend. You worried about your wife or husband. you like, is this the one? Oh, I'm going to seek this one. Oh, I'm going to seek that one. You already took your eyes off Jesus. Now you got worry in your head. Now, that girl broke your heart. Jesus, why you did this? Why we always blame God for our... He still loves us, though. Also, one last thing. This, this desk right here is such a blessing. It's a blessing. You know, this camera. I wanted a camera since I was 17, dude. I got it when I started doing God's will. Blessing. Blessing. Living, breathing, it's a blessing. I prayed for a camera. God blessed. God blessed me, man. And God is blessing you. God is... God wants us to be like Him. In the Word, He says He wants us to be generous givers. A generous giver means they are eager to give. God has a generous giver character. He's eager to give to His children. We are His children. Just keep walking. You, you know, you, 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 you're, you're stopping blessings coming to yourself when you're living for yourself, bro. You know what I'm saying? But what I want to tell you is don't stop. How can I word it for you? Don't, when you pray for something, you get it. Don't take your eyes off Jesus, you know? Don't look at the blessing and forget about God. You know what I mean? Because don't forget, this is what it is actually, don't forget about God after you get what you prayed for. You know, we pray for many things. You know, I pray for a camera, I pray for this, I pray for that. You know, I, I got them. You know, God's answering prayers. Praise God, His will be done. But I cannot forget about God. These things, they're great, but it's materialistic things. It's not going to do nothing for me. It's not going to really satisfy me. Right when I got the camera, I was, happy. I was happy for like about, what, two hours? And then like, it's like life goes on, you know, that feeling is gone, you know. Got the desk, I'm happy, you know what I mean? And after it's done, and I, I, I put all my stuff on it, I'm going to be happy for like about, we could say like two days. And then, you know. God's always going to be there. He will always fulfill you. You know, you can't be fulfilled in these things. You need these things to do whatever your calling is, to do whatever you're doing. But don't ever forget about God after you get what you pray for. Because He'll give it to you, you know, for His will be done. You know, He's not going to give you anything that's going to destroy you, though. Like I said earlier in this video, you know, He wouldn't have gave me this camera if He knew. He sees the future. If He knew, the camera would destroy me. If he knew the camera would destroy my walk with Jesus. If he knew this death would not be beneficial. If he knew these things, you know. 
He has to grow you. I didn't get this. I got this till now. I, I was doing stuff on YouTube since like the beginning of this year. You know, I could have been got one, but it was never in my head. It was never, you know, there's times God just does it in a certain time. And then after this desk is put to good use and a bunch of ministry things, I got a bunch of other stuff too coming in for, for the ministry, you know what I mean, in Jesus' name. But after that, maybe another year, I'm going to have like something else, you know, or not. And if you don't, it's okay. You're content. You know what I'm saying? But don't forget about God after you get what you pray for. You got to keep looking at him because he wants to give you more blessings. You know, this is just the tip of the iceberg of what he really wants to do in your life. You know, so I pray that this video bless you. You know, praise God. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Don't look at anything else. This world will lead you into the grave and then spit on your grave after that. You know, you could be, you know, I saw this thing. This football player, you know, he died. And all he got was a silence at the... The game, the football game, it was like, let's have a, let's have a moment of silence for um, blank, blank, blank. So it was like quiet for like two seconds. So like, all right, everybody, get back on your feet. Let's go watch the game. We got the Gators versus the... They just didn't care after that. Two seconds, you get two seconds of silence from that football team you gave your life to, you gave your whole identity to, they gave you two moments of silence. All right, everybody, get your popcorn and let's go. You know what I mean? Don't live for people in this world. You got to do stuff in this world. You got to, you know, whatever God gifted you, gifted you with football. But you know, your eyes are on Jesus. You're a kingdom man. You do stuff to bring glory to God. God's going to honor you when you get up there. You know what I mean? You don't want to give your life to people down here and not have Jesus. You know, you're living for people. You know, don't live by people's opinions and, 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 and thoughts of you because you're going to die at their disapproval. Because you're living for their approval. So when you're living for their approval, you're going to die when they disapprove of something. That's why you always look at God. And if you're, if you're right standing with God, nothing, nobody else matters, bro. You know, they, they, they're, they're, they're able to think about you however they want to think. You know, you can't control that. But you just got to make sure you walk in blameless. You know, you're walking holy and righteous. You know, you're walking on this narrow road with a pure heart, pure intentions to do God's will and to have love for others. This is what the desk looks like, everything on it. You know what I mean? Got my mic right there. Got a little thing right there. You know, got that boy in the building. You know what I'm saying? This one, I'm going to start doing some, some little ministry things in Jesus' name. Boom. Oh, this is another way, you know, I'm going to shoot some videos just like this. This is, you know, on the desk like this. Had that bobble on me, bum bum. You know what I mean? I could change the color. You know what I'm saying? Bow. If I don't need that little red, need that white, need that blue, need that green. Hey, on this side of the kingdom, they say, they say, it's not greener on the other side. It's greener on this side with Jesus, for sure. So I pray this video blessed you. If it did, share it. If you learned something, I want to hear what you learned in the comments. You know, in Jesus' name.